Okay, this should be the final stretch of the DLC. And it's a long one, too. It only took me, like... It's been, on, it's been over two hours, I know that much. Alright, let's see, who should we take? This time we are taking Vivienne as a little bit of tanky backup. Uh, Iron Bowl was good. Good choice, and of course Black Wall. I mean, Tom Rainier. Lenyana told us about what happened with your hand. We all knew this was probably our last time out together. Let's make it a good one. Let us show all who would cross the Inquisition the price of their mistake. It's been an honor to kick asses beside you all. But now. Hell yeah. One more fight then. Let's finish this. I did not know guard granted resistance to knockback. That's good. So this is the Darbarad. We seem to be in a dumping ground for broken alluvians. Where did the Kunari get all these? How long have they been studying alluvians? It's a lot of Kunari. This invasion plan the better. I have an idea. Oh whoops. There we go. Okay, plan has been put into action. Go on, Blackwall. You got this. You know, considering there's veil fire, I might want to actually read how to get inside. Come on, true through it. Boop. Nope, ow. Oh, okay, that's good. I wish I could say I'm surprised that Vitasala wants to murder everyone, but it makes sense. We tell stories about how corrupt the South is. Who wouldn't want to kill the evil nobles and save the people? Hmm. I mean, that is the result of the Kunari War in Kirkwall that happened. It is a massive war. You want to take them out one at a time, fast, or we'll have a mess on our hands. I like having messes on our hands, so... I don't think you can just assassinate people. Oh, whoops. I went a little too far. I don't see this mess that you were speaking of. Oh, there's more people. Okay. Come on. There. Good 
Vivian's doing a good job on keeping up with her barrier. That's quite the duel. Hmm. down here oh this is where we came from <coughs> oh gatehouse key no, doors doors locked, okay. What the hell is this? Oh, okay. I think I got this. Okay. So that way's open, but that way's not. And then there. But before we go there, how about we investigate up here? Red Lyrian. Do the Canari have any idea what they're dealing with? Why is it always the Red Lyrium? Yeah, yeah. Quiet, you. That wasn't it. Didn't work. Oh, God. Black wall, black wall, black wall. Uh, I'm just gonna move over here. Oh, this is also a bad idea. There's just bad ideas all around the board today.
craft weapons? Ow. Getting me out of here. I will be fine. Ooh, supplies. I believe there's a dragon that I have to fight. If I remember correctly. Yep, there it is. Dragon's breath is an actual dragon. Epa, Bog. Inquisition, Nira Tafiasara, Niravata Dim Kata. His wrath now, please, Venet Kata. Not a chance, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Eh, sure, let's take some time for some light reading. And then, of course, detonate the Gotbot. Ow, my face. Oh god, why? Stab me? I don't like to be stabbed. Wait, what? What? Is there still somebody? Oh, there is still somebody. There's an assassin. Okay. I say we free the dragon. Turn 
Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Dragon, dragon, calm down. Don't make me kill you. Wait, so how am I supposed to solve this? Oh, hey, there's got one to ignite. I don't think I can actually do this. I might have to actually kill the dragon. Ow! Who is shooting me? Oh, it's the dragon. Hey, 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 stop that. You know what? I don't have time to solve the puzzle. You're dying. I forget what the ward I get if I free the dragon, but... Ow, that thing is a tail. Yeah, yeah, because I don't have time to solve your damn puzzles. Nor do I want to solve your damn puzzles. Plus, it's attacking me, so therefore it's not innocent. Maybe I can find a solution. Where's Vivian? Vivian. There we go. Okay. How do I ignite this? Where is the damn primer? Okay, whatever. Yep, dragon's dying. Also, this thing is not innocent, it's a dragon.
Use the mark, use the mark. Dear Inquisitor, you have such a little time left. You must finally see the truth. Elven magic already tore the sky apart. If the agents of Ben Harrell are not stopped, you will shatter the world. But we're not working with them. The Inquisition has nothing to do with these agents. Come, Inquisitor. I am the eyes and ears of the Canari people. Do you think you can deceive me? You would have died from the mark on your hand, but for the help of one of their chief agents. The same agent who helped seal the breach, who led you to Skyhold, who gave Corypheus the orb, then founded the Inquisition. Soulless, agent of Ben Harrell. Yep. <laughs> How utterly surprising. Soulless is an agent of Ben Harrell. Did you not know? We thought you were his ally. Yeah, but there's some stuff Soulless he doesn't tell us. He pushed a dying canary into the Winter Palace to lure you into opposing us. Without him, we could have brought the South peace and wisdom along the gentle path. Now we must take the way of blades. Ah! Panaheda, Inquisitor. If it is any consolation, so we will not help you. We gotta stop her. Solus is one of us. But no, nah, no, nah, he's not. He's an asshole. Solus is the only one who can help with my mark. We find him before Vidasana does. What happened to all those people that were pointing spears at me? Did those guys just not... Is, are they not there? I'm drawing this DLC way too close. The bit of Sala can't be far. Jeez. We must hope Solus can reverse the anchor's effects before it kills you. Solus, the agent of Fen Harrell. I suspected something was off with our unwashed apostate. Hey, he's my friend. Hey, where's the supply crate? What just happened? Okay. So we entered into the mirror. Came here. Oh, you guys are just far behind. God dang block. Oh, I can't attack her, okay. 
Well, that's... I got... I have some long reach. This is a kind of a weird final boss type thing. Where is he? Did I just like blow him through the floor? No, no, he's right there. There. Okay, be like that. Stop retreating. Fuck you, person. He needs to stop retreating. Just needs to stand still. was a good maneuver, but don't do that. And boosh! care of your damn assassins. Boosh! And not as big of a kaboosh as I wanted, really. This guy, I believe, functions as the final boss. He's gonna crash down somewhere. Oh, he's over there.
nice to just chunk off his health like that. When can he see me? Oh god, what the hell? Oh. The the mark detonate thing, yeah. I let it build up too much. Okay. Now we just gotta do this final showdown with the Sarah boss or whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, this is risky. Eh, yeah, let's go for it. That's how you eliminate an enemy. We kill this guy quickly. There. Oh yeah, probably discharge. There. No wild magic here. Time to finish this. You are dead, Inquisitor. Your soul is dust. Oh. Oh, did you heal him? The colors get kind of weird in this part of the game, and I have no idea why. But we are in the fate, so...
Oh shit. So this is it. He just jumps around, he does this bullshit, and then he summons... Ow. There. I don't know how he can stand up against all this damage. Oh god, try demons. Oh, and the demons get stronger. Forgot about that little thing, that the demons get stronger as the fight goes on. Like now, he has a pride demon. Oh no, not what I wanted. I somehow avoided the damage. Should be dead after this. Kaboosh. Cinematic. And through the mirror we find Hmm. Just us. Just me. And all of the Kunari soldiers turned to stone. At least now I have something to decorate my house with. And there's Solus. Solus. Oh dear. Things going up to our head now. Many. How were you able to control the anchor in the same way as when I stopped it from killing you at Haven? Although I am stronger now, the mark you bear was bestowed upon you by the orb of Fenharel. It's my orb. Your 
Ben Harrell. Yep. I was Sora's first. Clan Harrell came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. Nah, I'm not gonna attack it. Are you a fragment of what Ben Harrell once was? Like Mithal? No. This is all I have ever been. And the legends? I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fen Harrell. And when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. By the way, here are some sweet duds. I Look at that. And, people, and in so doing, destroy their world. You love the Fae. Why would you create the veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Oh. Meaning, had I not created the veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. Hmm. You banished the false gods. You didn't kill them. You met Mithal, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You said that the Elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> Crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. Hmm, well that's... I thought was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected That's some them. vengeance right there. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. Absolute power, corrupting absolutely, blah blah blah. The Evanuris were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, and finally gods. The Evanuris. <coughs> creating the veil destroy the world. You saw the remains of Via Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the veil destroyed it. There were countless mm. other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fae, all destroyed. The elven legends of immortality, all true. It was not the arrival of humans that caused them to begin aging. But where were the humans during all this time? The Veil took everything from the elves, even themselves. Okay, well, what happens next? What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. Why is that necessary? Why does this world have to die for the Elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. But the return of my people means the end of yours. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Yeah, but we're gonna die. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck... They will return their focus to Devinta. That should give you a few years of relative peace. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body, who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel, mine. Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? 
You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Alright, so meet our next Until villain. Comes, a guy who is traveling with us since day one. Why? Because I am not a monster. It's like Kreia. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event. Kreia, aka Darth Treya. So you let us do your dirty work. The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. The Kunari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheia should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus. Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you had recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be free? I had plans. I never thought of you as someone who would do that, Solus. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was hmm. like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. Thanks, I guess. But whatever. Whatever your reasons, we couldn't have defeated Corypheus without you. Your doubts are misplaced. Everything you accomplished, you earned. You control the Alluvians now. Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the Labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. But he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. But what about this There's pain in the ass mark, huh? It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. We are almost out of time. It's taking over half my face now. Cut to black. Now for the epilogue. More music of the caper. The Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. Oh, okay. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Konari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, you would not be alive to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization. Yeah, we lost our arm. Inquisitor.
Hmm. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order. With or without anyone's approval. I'm proud to say we accomplished that goal. We will honor the sacrifices of those who gave their lives in defense of what we stood for. And still stand for. Because our work is not done. Where we led in war, we will now serve in peace. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done, but the Inquisition and its mission... Ah, oh, come on. Don't let the loss of one arm stop you. Come on. You can still wield a one-handed sword. Pansy. In high town, I assume. Or this shit is weird. Well, that's fuzzy. Ah, there we go. Now everybody's in focus. Over the next several months, the Inquisition carefully gave over many of the duties it had held. No, no, don't skip it. As the Divine's personal guard and peacekeeping force, the Inquisition shrank to a more manageable size. Many who had served went home, though the remaining forces force was still enough to give pause to any who might threaten the Divine's plans. Those who served the new Inquisition were tested and choked, er, checked thoroughly in the hope of ferreting out any more spies within its ranks. With the Dragon's Breath disrupted and any hope of a, a swift victory dashed, the Kunari retreated back to the north. Few knew what debates were waged in Porvalon, Porvolan, but not long after the exalted consul, the Kunari launched new attacks against Tevinter. Their aggression caught the already unstable Aperium off guard. Tevinter was soon mired in a war many feared could spread across Thedas. The Exalted Council remained intact, advising Divine Victoria on important matters. Cassandra served for several years. While she often disagreed with Leliana's policies, the former right and left hands of the Divine shared a mutual respect and worked well together. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Orle, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. For a time, the new Seekers remained reclusive, showing no interest in, the, in worldly affairs and working to a purpose few outside their order could guess. With the Inquisition at an end, as it had, 
At an end as it once had been, the few surviving mages who had served it found themselves with nowhere to go. The Divine had declared the circle over, but something needed to take its place. Vivienne led many of the Old Guard to form a new circle, surprising absolutely no one when it immediately elected her as its Grand Enchanter. The remainder of the Inquisition's veteran mages formed a rival organization, the College of Enchanters. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the South, vying for power. After the Exalted Council, Leliana devoted herself fully to the Sunburst Throne, and her dream of reshaping the Chantry. Is that Cole right there? Is that Cole? I see Cole. Within a year, she removed restrictions surrounding Chantry priesthood, allowing men and women of all races to be initiated and ordained. This decree was followed swiftly by her decision to return the Canticle of Shartan to the canonical chant, a move that divided Androstians deeply. A rebellion to renounce her and return the Chantry to its former state arose, beginning first in Orlais, then spreading to other parts of Thedas. As quickly as it began, the rebellion faltered. While most agreed that the rebellion collapsed due to infighting, some whispered that the Divine herself engineered its failure. The rebellion fractured into a number of separate cells, some of which limped on for several months before disappearing into obscurity. Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more ties than when she began, disappearing back into her confusing weave of favors and friends. She's like Rorschach up there. Just... leaping. Oh, what?! With frequent visits to her Whittle, of course. Ah, oh, Sarah and Scout Harding. Oh, that's adorable. Anyway, perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. Come on. When the knobs piss about with your left or right, left hand or right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. Varric took, took up the role of Viscount and, with the help of his friend Hawk, rebuilt Kirkwall's damaged infrastructure. Is that Vivienne right there? Under his rule, the city-state finally resumed its place as a major trade hub of the Free Marches. He continued to ignore all mail from both the Merchant's Guild and the Prince of Starkhaven. Varric looks good in those furs. Like he belongs in them. With the Inquisition in its new role, the Bull's Chargers returned to taking jobs throughout Orle and Ferelden. Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of Venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order to Thedas. After the Inquisition translated to a peacekeeping role, 
Cullen continued to serve as commander of its forces. Under his leadership, the Inquisition protected the Divine's interests while enforcing new standards of security. Cullen also expanded the Chantry's treatment for Templars, whose minds were taken by Lyrium, as well as those who wished to cease Lyrium usage. And as chaos reigned in the north, and threats to the Divine lurked in every shadow, Cullen remained ready to serve. Dorian returned to Deventer to take his father's place in the Magistrium, Magisterium. As rumors flew about the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Maverus Talani, he formed a group called the Lucerni to restore and redeem Tevinter. Those fighting by Magister Pavus' side noted that he kept in constant communication with the Inqui Inquisitor via message crystal. Whether for vital information or for moral support, these talks seemed to give Dorian the strength to continue his fight. After the Exalted Council, Tom Rainier bid farewell to his friends and went to Weishaupt Fortress to pre pl pledge himself to the Grey Wardens for good. Blah 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 blah. While he was rarely seen in the years that followed, some said that they encountered Rainier in far-flung lands, their accounts, their accounts always similar. Rainier carried out the duty of the Wardens, but always found a time to help others along the way. Sometimes he served as a shield for the defenseless. Other times, he spread simple cheer among children with gifts of small, carved toys. After easing the Inquisition's transition into the Chantry, Josephine returned to Antiva and her family. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montelliers were once again permitted to trade in Orlais. The next few years were a busy time as many ships with the Montelier crest were built and set sail again from Antiva's harbors. Soon, Ruveni pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors took to the seas, determined to rekindle the rivalry. Apart from Josephine's sister, Yvette, nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montelier took the development in stride. Cole returned to the Fade, saying that there was more pain coming, and that he knew where compassion would be needed most. He promised that his friends in the Inquisition would remember him, and that where the hurt was greatest, he would help. After the events of the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances, as did elven servants all across Thedas. No one could say where they went, but those who believed the Inquisitor's story about Fen'Harel wondered just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were. And what the ancient elven rebel had planned.
agents have found nothing. With the illusions, he could be anywhere. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dread Wolf. But also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself. If we can. What? Stop stabbing knives. Into the maps. Someone worked very hard to make that. And you just stab it in. You bastard. Alright. To all of you who played Dragon Age Inquisition, who laughed, cried, and reached out on social media, who made fan art and comics and cosplay and jokes, thank you. Dragon Age Inquisition was a labor of love. Without you, it would never have been possible. Your support and your passion touched us deeply. We hope that in some small way, this game touched you as well. Bear your blade and raise it high. The Dragon Age team. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Dragon Age Inquisition. Thank you for this journey and being here with me. And you know what? Have a good day.